We have Tim Kennedy in the house today, a near and dear friend of ours. We are stoked. You look good as always. Yeah. I love the, I love your swan shirt. Thank I actually you. today was considering taking a career into being a swan. Yeah, it's second. It's yeah. a second profession. Um, I I can actually embody the, the both the black and white aspects of a swan. Mm. Um, you know, the, the darkness. I really like like that movie, by the way. Natalie Portman is my all-time celebrity crush, especially with the shaved head. I don't know why. Maybe I like dudes in their 20s or something, but, you know. (laughs) With shaved heads? Come on. There was a sweet lesbian scene in there. Not to get too much. You've never seen Black Swan? You've watched every movie ever. That that is true. No, it was uh, Milo Kunis. There you go. They are both gorgeous. Gorgeous, Solid teamwork. Gorgeous, beautiful women. I can't remember it, so. I'm with you. I... I know she was in a movie. <laughs> They've both been in lots of movies. Have they? Okay. Yeah. Got it. Lots. Yeah. Stunning. Stunning women. Stunning. What the hell have you been up to, man? You, like, you're one of the most busy dudes I know. Every time I think of people like, oh, you complain you're busy. You legit are crazy busy. Last time I talked to him, we were texting back and forth, and he's like, I just, he just called because he's like, hey, I'm driving. I was like, hey, dude, do you want to link up? you want to do the podcast? He's like, yeah, man, let me check my schedule. It's just like right around the corner. So next year, there's a date <laughs> free... I said June. Uh, <laughs> I said June. Yeah, I said. two dates. <laughs> it's like nine months in the great. future. And then like sixty thousand people died, and I had a. And then I could drive down to San Antonio because we're in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah, yeah. Well, pandemic. Thanks. Because well, thanks it's for coming. Most people know you. Special force operator, range qualified sniper. Not only that, but Sweet. MMA fighter. You were in the UFC, and then also you've done film, TV. Uh, the show was what Finding Hitler. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You've done a living fuck ton of stuff, man. It's cool to see. World yeah, record yeah. holder, largest Jenga stack. A lot of that, people don't know that. No, that not <laughs> not. So I, I have gone for two different world records in Guinness. Um, one was for smashing beer cans with my elbow. I'm still recovering from clearly. Wow. I did not win. And uh, the other one was for uh, smallest penis in a gay film. Nice. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, what, uh, yeah. How also, many cans was the, was the current record and where did you get? It was like 130 something and I was well short. Were these full cans? Yeah, they were full cans. You have to smash mm-hmm. them all the way to metal to metal. But the problem was we built a square and at the halfway point, they didn't put the cans um, in the – so at the turn point where I'd start going back down, I started hitting the back, the wrong side of the mm. can. So at that exact – like halfway through, I was on pace to break the record. You watch the video, and I go like this, and you see a can launch across the room and hit somebody. And then the next can, I la- launch into a camera. And then the third can, I splurt blood out of my elbow. And it was evident at that point that um, something has gone wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Did you just wake up one morning and go, what, how can yeah. I use my brute force to fucking break yeah. a world record? It was the genesis of this, yeah. right? Yeah. So when, you, when you're short, a troll, half ogre with hairy hands, right. um, you're like, like oh, I could break the record for the number of games won in chess, you know, mm-hmm. or like how many like mathematical formulas can I create in, in like this clairvoyant moment of, of me writing on a chalkboard as if I'm... You know, and whatever that film was. Where Beautiful you know, Mind. Beautiful. No, Harvard. Oh. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Ben Affleck and uh, yeah, yeah, Matt yeah, Damon. That, yeah. Well, clearly, I'm not any of those people. Uh, so I went to the dumbest common, den- like the lowest common denominator of like what is maybe the most achievable thing for an idiot to do. And that's why I went <laughs> for. That would be an interesting thing to go through the Guinness Book of World Records and see which record we would be most applicable to try to beat. <laughs> I know what his is. It's going to be something involving food. Uh-huh. No, because it, I'm not, I'm not a volume eater. You're a speed eater though. Yeah. Yeah. You're like a hundred chicken nuggets in a minute. You might get that one. Yeah. He that is, has to exist a, as a record. Yeah. It oh, has we, to we exist. Look that up. But the problem is, is that he would have to train and it would take a significant amount of time, effort, and energy in order to focus. Dedicate himself. It would focus. take focus. It would take mission focus. Right. And he would lose interest in it. That's probably my phone. If you grab lose, my even fanny if it's pack, food, he would lose interest in it. You think? And see if there's a. Uh, I don't know. A phone I, in the back that's, pouch. That's a derogatory thing. No, at the very back. About what? You. I'm just saying. Like, the other way. You, you tend to shift your focus. Oh no! At yeah, times. I would get no? bored. I would, right. uh, the Sorry. world record thing. It's not mine. Is that, just so. I mean, where where are we we didn't get lost. We didn't. So you just how long ago was this this can smashing? Oh, it was like a year ago. Oh, I was okay. just joking. Oh, so that is not a new. No, th- th- okay, this this it. was a different idiot moment. We had a hundred pound ball 
uh, like a medicine ball that was 100 pounds, and we had a six-foot rope, and we were racing. You had to, like, row a 1,000 meters, ski a 1,000 meters, bike a 1,000 meters, run a 1,000 meters, uh, 100 deadlifts, 100-something else, 100-something else, and then you have to pick up this 100-pound ball and put it over <laughs> this six-foot rope I'm 100 times. And if you do it right like an atlas stone, right. like a power lifter, where you get down a strong man, you clean it up to your legs, put it to your chest, and then push it over. Uh, you went all forearms. Yeah. You but pull you, a tendon? He's so right. So oh. if you're strong and dumb, you could just pick it up and put it over like this. So, and it's so much faster. And I was watching so the guy next faster. to me do it the right way, and I'm like, wow, he's really slow. And I'm competitive and right. dumb. So that's a great combo when you're com- competitive yeah. and dumb. So I was like, oh, I'm going to beat this idiot. So uh, that was two weeks ago, and I still can't fully use my right arm. <laughs> wow. I, that's that's enjoyable. Do, do you think you should be get, get, getting smarter as you get older? Well, I beat him. So. <laughs> oh, did oh, you win? Oh, 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 okay. It's all good then. I, I thought you lost an injury. Right. You so just kept what's going. So a little bit of black tape for yeah. a couple of weeks. Yeah. 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 yeah, you're good. No, the black tape's the least of my problems. It's like doing things with my right hand. Right. Are limited. I, I have a I have a off mark question, which is how many injuries do you think that you've had? in your adult life. Like when I classify injury, it's not like a scrape. I'm talking like <laughs> stitches, broken bones, things that require. I love that we keep going down these, the, these horrible things <laughs> the, the that pain. everybody, we're well, not just pain. We're going to get like, to my torture. You, you have a dangerous, yes. let's figure out how stupid Tim is. Yeah. Hard, physically <laughs> difficult life. Like, so I was just injuries? talking, um, like VA stuff and they were like, you might have the most volume of damage done to a human that I've ever seen in my life. And when you think like a VA, he has volumes of medical records, but it's variety, right? It's mm-hmm. like from, from bad jumps to being blown up to, to eating charges. It's like five, four, three, but I want to be the first Boom. one through the door. Of course. You're trying, yeah. you're trying to game it. So I'm going to chub this dude and be one step to, oh, too close. Thank right? you for that water impulse charge. Uh-huh. It just threw me fucking How six feet. Flash bangs. And you're like five, you're, you know, counting the nine banger. And you're like, I think that was seven. Fuck it. We're going to go. And then that was not seven. That was five. <laughs> and then you eat the first two. <laughs> I, I feel like the mill back in the day before like CTE and TBI was prevalent within the mil- like medical community. It was like, all right, teams, let's all circle around this one banger and feel what it feels like. Yeah. How'd that feel? Let's do it again. And you're kind of yeah. like starting to look back yeah. and you're like, that's why I have a lot of short term memory loss. Yeah. Oh, and then in ma- breacher school, they made me stand right outside of charge. So I yeah. quote unquote knew what overpressure yeah. felt like. Yeah. I'm like, I don't, <laughs> I, I don't think you need to train to know what overpressure feels I like. Would, like. I would raise your eyebrows block. and open your mouth. Yeah. So you that's, can. That's ups- what they would do. Yeah. Right. yeah. So like this. yeah. Everybody I'd be on the catwalk. So you don't bleed. Watching iteration after iteration after iteration underneath a roof. Yeah. Fucking. Yeah, just idiots. getting fucking shredded it's, it's, for days on end. I'm sure that's probably time why. for everybody to feel Who, what it's at? like to get Who shot. Guys? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> shoulder this one, Tim, yeah. please. Here, no. just put it in the shoulder. <laughs> but, but, but how many injuries do you think you've had over the course of that? I mean, so I professionally fought for 17 years. Um, in that time, I fought maybe 200 times. Right. Uh, as as a professional and semi pro and amateur, cumulatively, probably around 200 real fights. Um, fought in kickboxing, boxing, wrestling, judo, pancreas, uh, probably another five, 600 fights in those, you know, so we're up in the thousand fights, uh, throughout my career as fighting. And then 16 years this January in special forces, uh, that, that isn't good for the overall body health, um, and, uh, I mean, you're wearing it pretty damn well. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's revisit that I'm dumb. So <laughs> lots of bad decisions about like, you know, like, like that fine line. Of, is he tough or dumb? Well, like that thing keeps moving with me. Okay. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. fair. I, my, my brother, my middle brother, Alan, is by far the toughest of the best brothers. But he is, he is very intelligent in an intellectual sense, but then absolutely stupid as fuck when it comes to physical activity where he'll just go 20 miles and ruck and he's like it doesn't hurt that bad i'm like bro your your uh, thighs are bleeding yeah, yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> i mean that's he was he had a powerlifting career and all that stuff and the weight in that dude's body ouch just like the peripheral like seeing this black thing by my face you know i just keep, like keep wanting to do things with it so that's so your brother and i probably have a lot in cam in common in the sense of like we're our yeah, exactly. There's just black things next to you. <laughs> He's go, going down a dark hole there. Well, what's the worst injury you've ever sustained? You think it's? It, I mean, I know you've been 
wound were blown up and shit, but like bad jump. Is it MMA bad jump? Because um, that Roll Romero fight looked pretty had nasty. A bad jump? Oh yeah, I've had a bad jump. We, um, my friend Peter Abara uh, and Dave Hall, we you know we're three three trees into the wind um, or three winds into the tree. Yeah. We're far out off the drop zone, and uh, we are taking turns pulling branches out of orifices, orifices below our waist. Right. There's not a lot of holes yeah. below your waist. There's not. And we are One. pulling, like, branches and twigs out of all of them. Mm. Yeah. Um, and Peter, I don't know how it happened, but, like, he hit a tree, and it was, like, puncture wound, puncture wound into the asshole. Like, oh, you can actually nice. see the stick, like, almost got uh, you, almost uh, got you. Oh. Yes! Third time's a charm, gotcha. motherfucker. <laughs> gotcha. It's like smell that. You know? Yeah, it smells like a <sighs> below the nipple orifice. Oh. And there's not a lot in the male body. Nope. Um, <laughs> yeah, the Yoel Romero fight was... I, I just posted a photo. I'm like weird about pain too because I never wanted for, to forget pain. Um, especially when it was a conscious decision where I went and did something and I failed at that thing. I didn't want to ever numb the pain that went along with that, so I would remember it later. So, like, I would learn. You know, like, if you put your hand on something and it burns you, you're like, okay, I don't, I don't want to forget what that pain feels like. Same thing, like, if a, if a girl breaks up with you because you cheated on her, you're like, okay, maybe I don't cheat on her, so... You I don't, don't feel that have, pain. Yeah. Same kind of thing. I apply that in, in the physical sense. So, after fights, if they had to, you know fix my face, um, you know, stitches or maybe close a portion of my orbital socket. Um, I would never let them use any painkiller. Oh, wow. Okay. And, uh, the doctor from the UFC posted this thing and he's like, uh, here's a picture of Tim after a fight and I'm doing stitches and he and I got in a fight about it because he wouldn't let me do any local anesthetic. And then he wouldn't let me give him any general anesthetic. And then he wouldn't let me do anything whatsoever besides fix him. And, uh, and then I did it and he sat there as if he got a haircut and it was the most unnerving emo like moment as a doctor that I've ever had watching this, a patient of mine as I was sticking a needle and like putting pliers in his face and him just looking at me. Uh, and I was like, you don't get out enough. I was like, <laughs> like, let me introduce you to some of my friends because like, yeah. this is a Tuesday in some of my world. And like, oh, we're down range and you got a bad tooth. Don't worry. We have an 18 Delta for that. Yeah. yeah. Take some I love that laugh. You're Take a shit you hear him? He's like, huh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we could fix that tooth. It's kind of like the old saying goes smarter, not harder. But I, it, it, I'm glad you're on our team, to be honest yeah. with you. I'm glad you, you uh, wear that American flag. So yeah. Or a uh, swan. One of the things I, I never get a chance chance to talk to you about is the like injury recovery process mm. because you must have suffered an incredible amount of injuries right so this process you have to have a, a fairly extensive process by now as to like okay do i do you know tomorrow you come down with some type of tendonitis or you have a back injury you go into a remediate action because you have to you you have to have a process that you've already built in because you You've done this so many yeah, times. But, right? um, I mean, when, you're, when your body is kind of – like I, I try to keep my body at a very, very high functioning yeah. level all the time. So when, when injuries are fewer mm -hmm. and then when I do get an injury, recovery is way faster. You know, like I get lots of good sleep. Right. Um, I have lots of sex. I mm -hmm. eat lots of good food. Um, like all the things that a normal male body should be doing, um, really, like we work more than most people. Like, and how how can right. we do this volume of work? It's like right. well, we we optimize and become very efficient as as in comparison to the rest of the sentient, you know, three and a half million men that are wa men that are mm -hmm. walking around the face of this planet. For you, you uh, audio users, she put quotations yeah, when he said men. Yeah. Yeah. That is my phone over there somewhere. My machine gun, it's probably around that vicinity. <laughs> it's not bothering us. No one that. can hear that over here. We're fine. We're good. Yeah, yeah. it's my ring. So you're you're. Basically, you've or you've already optimized your body for the most part as far as like what you're doing on a daily yep. basis. You've got a great routine. How much sleep are you typically getting? I'm I'm like a six six hours and like eyes are open. Yeah, you know, and, and there's so I as I try to naturally sleep from the time I go to sleep uninterrupted sleep where the phone is off. Mm -hmm. um, like fortunately, phones are cool now where you can you know, like if one of my daughters calls me, I have teenagers. Uh, if they text me, it comes through. But right. if there's anybody else in the world. Um, like you're not going to reach me once right. I turn that phone on silent. And, um, so, you know, six, six, seven hours, I'm, I am like 
too much energy type thing. Right. Um, a lot like, of people don't know that. You can put a VIP list on your phone and mm -hmm. send people that call you to answers. That way you uh, don't have to worry about all that bullshit. I'm not saying that I should be on your respective lists, but you are on mine. I will put you on there. Yeah. I didn't think we about that. But if you call me at 2 in the morning, those. yeah. Yeah, that's right, buddy. Hey, did you get the – um? so, like, we, you're, you roll the extreme, the, the Iridium extreme. extreme. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's what I use. Mm -hmm. Did you see the Go? Yeah, I've got one of those Okay. Too. I'm on the fence about that thing. Yeah. I've got a, so what I wanted to do is I kind of built in a redundancy in the, the entire communication plan. So f for instance, if my wife is somewhere else, I've got to have them in multiple different locations and then we can, I can break different communications into yep. different, uh, different vehicles. Actually, Mike Glover and I were just talking about this the other day, but so that's the way that I built it, the entire communications plan to include a, like I've got little ham radios for the entire yep. Uh, facility out here in Halotis and um, you know internal communications, external communications. Yeah, I just use a mirror. You just flash it back and forth. Yep. Yeah, we'll just a little mirror. glint, a little yep. glint. Maybe smoke, you know? That's good, pop <laughs> smoke. And then you, you, you fan it for different signals. There you go, it's like Morse code through smoke-ish. And yep. you, so you're getting six and a half, seven hours of sleep on top of the fact that you guys just had a new kid not too long ago too, mm -hmm. right? Yep, we have a six month old, she's crushing it. Is she is just a fat, like, we're going to talk baby, baby stuff for a second. Hey, you right? guys handle it. I like kids, all right? I just said I didn't want them. Doesn't mean that I don't like playing so uncle. as daughters right. from best breastfed mommies, um, they are healthy things, different than a lot of other babies. Yep. You know, like, if there's poop there, it's like, I'm going to move a leg roll, and then I'm going to move another leg roll, yep. and then I'm going to move the first layer of vagina fat, and then I'm going to, like, pin this other layer, and then I'm going to start cleaning from the vagina out to get all the poop out of the fat layers. Yep. This is real. Like, this is real life. <laughs> and uh, so that's like, that's my little, she's a tank. Yeah, both of my kids were breastfed till uh, two. Yeah, you so can they, roll Two them. years until they start, <laughs> like, and they, you look back on those pictures. And we used to, we, we could, when they're your kids, you don't necessarily see it as much as other people. But Nara, when she was a baby, we used to always get people going, whoa, she doesn't miss a meal, does she? You know, and we're like. What the fuck? That's not very nice. <laughs> but then we look back on those photos like, oh. and we're like, whoa. Yeah. I just want to tell people like that. It's like, well, listen, let's go back to Greece. This is what would happen. The Spartans would pick up your baby and they're like, sorry. And they pick up my baby and like, this one shall live. Like that's what would happen, you know, and, and how healthy these kids are. Um, how many kids do you have now? I have four. 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 Dude. Yeah. yeah. Are you guys done? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you, you got a six six month old right yeah. now. Yeah. Look, look, like, look what's going on here. Yeah. What's your oldest? <laughs> We're done. Seventeen. Seventeen, yeah. and then six months. Wow. Yep. That's a good. That's a, that's a good separation there. Yeah. Here we are revisiting how <laughs> smart I am. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, that's all right. Yeah. The, the world needs your genetics. My, you got some good yeah, genetics. Exactly. My youngest is slowly turning into Mowgli from the Jungle Book. Like, Hells, now yeah. that we're now that yeah. we're on land. Like never any shoes. The gravel doesn't even Same. phase her. She's in the woods. Like yesterday, she came out of the woods while I was like picking some things. I'm like, where were you? Like, she has like a lizard hanging looking, from her mouth, looking for a chicken. I'm like, yeah. get back inside. <laughs> I'm just coming looking out of the woods a, by yeah, herself. Looking for a chicken. <laughs> looking for nice. a chicken. Yeah, tell me, sugar laid an egg. She's sitting on it over there. <laughs> now you uh, named them all. All yeah. right. <laughs> I won't. I won't let ours name. I'm, I'm like anti naming the chickens because like that that light tan one that she's dropped two soft eggs in the past month. She, she give me one more and you're going on the chopping block. Well, uh, Col -col -V. that's like yeah, meal that's prep. Funny because Charlotte gets really upset when when a chicken dies, and then Lux, the youngest, goes, "Who cares? We just get more." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I've seen your you know obviously I follow you, but. You've got chicken coop now. You guys got garden boxes mm -hmm. and garden the whole thing. Yeah, because you cause you moved what a year ago? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, nine months ago. Are you guys on? You guys have acreage. Mm -hmm. You guys have like a few handful of acres yep. now. Yeah, yeah. It looks cool. That place yep. looks nice up there. It yeah, really that does. I'll nod to the dude that lived there before. Um, you know, he, he uh, had some family persecution for gender, so he or for ethnicity, race, and uh, so he took a lot of precautions. So I literally, like, moved into an already prepper-type place. Oh, solid. And then yeah. I elevated it to, elevated it to um, like, our way of fighting. Right. Which is, like, 
you know, you kind of never want anybody to come, but then on the other side, you're like, what? Then I'll never get to use these claymores. <laughs> 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 They'll never know. I'm not about saying my I traps. want it, but if it happens, yeah. Yeah, when, like, a, when, a, when a Green a Beret laws, creates like his own Home Alone house, <laughs> claymores from the military, at least should use them. Yeah, know? exactly. Like, we're, what are we going to do with all this 550 cord that might be reclassed in my houses? Demo. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. Is that just a big roll of 550 cord? Yeah, it's really thick and green. And why, is, why is there a chalky <laughs> yeah. paste coming out of the center <laughs> yeah. of that? Oh, that's, that's the new 550, 550 cord. cord. What's all? What's all this modeling clay? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. just don't uh, <laughs> don't hit it yeah. too hard over there. Yeah, kids, <laughs> don't let the kids play don't, with don't it. Hit it. it. It's yeah. interesting you say that because it makes me think of some of the satirical videos we've done across the years, where it's like the whole premise of I wish a motherfucker would and people are like why would you ever wish that and you're like well it's 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 satirical in sense but at the end of the day we knowingly know that that is being a public figure an option for some of these crazy motherfuckers out there specifically related around when ISIS was very prevalent yeah. you know you were on the hit list I don't think I made that top one so I was a little upset about that that you outdid me on that but that's okay but you were but you made the billboard top 10 right for, yeah, yeah for fuck so you Isaacs. weren't on the isis top 10 but true you were but i made the hottest track since tupac against them that was my right. plan when i found out tim was above me on the hit list i was like i better but come tim out, also come out got on video and invited them to his house yeah, yeah. yeah. That was, but we're, we're joking again you know, like we were like the satirical <laughs> kind of position where we're making fun of it but then we're also like yeah i also wouldn't mind it you know there, there's a degree of Mm. Well, I think every joke has a subtle sense of truth to it. That's what makes it so funny. And what a lot of people can't handle specific jokes is because there's truth related yeah. to it. And it, it hurts their little uh, their little feeling box in there. Um, what comedian did uh, – was it SAG or the, um, the Emmys, the Grammys? One of them. And he just berated – The Oscars. Oh, yeah. yeah, Ricky Gervais. Ricky Oscar. Gervais. Oh. Amazing. Amazing. And that was a perfect example yeah. of yeah. like while it was jokes – there oh, it was a hundred percent true. There was lots of truth yeah. in there. Oh, he's your friend. I know. Yeah, yeah nobody knew. Yeah, like, Harvey Weinstein. The looks that yeah. that he you was took getting money for him. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he starts calling you people did. out. <laughs> you know, and like if, if if some video, you know, Netflix, Amazon called you, you'd pick if up the phone. If ISIS was a streaming yeah. service, yeah, yeah, exactly. you'd all call your agents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember that was a brutal line. But true. Yes. Yeah, I think those people, those people, I think there are a lot of people on this planet that are willing to sell their souls for their own personal gain and go against any efficacy or moral compass that they might, you know, believe that they sit on. Well, which I think rubs them even more raw where our jokes, the positions that we're coming from, they're also rooted in there's, truth. There's reality. Yeah. And, and our jokes are coming from like the opposite. Like right. You can't make jokes about me having a pedophile in my house or me doing business with a guy that uh you know sells women or right. manipulates them and yeah. uses them so like our jokes that we make are um rooted in kind of truth and freedom which is even right. more infuriating well of course because they don't they don't like that position that the jokes would be like and you know you might want an isis dude to come to your house or you know because you're, you're you're pre-planned for that and that this we're making fun of ourselves and that's the hilarious part of it i think yeah but i mean i think if you think about it like if you if you go for instance if you go on a coyote or a wolf hunt like you know coyotes are are essentially they're predators right so that's still really fun it's super, super fun. fun super fun so if you're going to kill predators like it's just part of having fun i i think that there is like something in that where you're rooted in in fact but it's a joke but why would anybody give a shit if you're killing predators who gives a fuck who cares yeah. You know, at the end of the day, like the, if it's but every life has value, Evan, I mean, it, every, it doesn't, especially maybe it provides you like, a lot of joy to kill them on the front steps when they come to your house. Maybe that's where the value comes in. Yeah. It's well, a I value think, proposition. Yeah. Um, our position are rooted in our view of justice and, um, and we, I, I believe are in moral high ground mm -hmm. and I, that is even more infuriating where they're like, ah, not only are they making jokes in a self-deprecating, hilarious way, but they're right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've never understood that. that. That's one of my biggest frustrations with Hollywood and their massive hypocrisy where, you know, when there's articles written on me that I'm romanticizing gun violence because my Instagram's full of firearms and I'm looking at myself, everything I own is legal. I properly stow it. And all of that is a tool and a means for my own personal defense, my family's defense. And 
hopefully never to this, but my community's defense, if need be, because I have years and years of training that will apply directly to protecting okay. safe people, yet I'm a piece of shit gun owner. And then the the nature of them, they go out and make Jason Bourne movies, and then they make all these violent, just murder central people over nothing. John Wick over a dog, right? And then it's like, yeah, yeah. I'm anti-gun. And I'm like, you are the exact problem that you're disagreeing with. Well, it's, perfect it's example. They're out of touch with reality. You know, Matt Damon gets on camera as much as he can and talks about how Anna Gunny is, but yeah, he's in the entire Born series. It's like, okay, give the paycheck back, bro. And also too, if your entire adult existence is you hanging out in the hills in West Hollywood, of course you don't understand why you would need to protect yourself yeah. because well, you've you stayed in, in a safe place yeah. your whole your whole life. I've loved this. Um, I think the, the partisan lines kind of dissolved in the Corona. Uh, pandemic, yeah. Again, using quotation fingers, uh, where you know gun ownership, it, it wasn't party specific. People that were super anti-gun, all of a sudden are going and buying guns and calling people like us. Like mm-hmm. I'm sure you guys had very left-leaning friends, even anti-gun friends, calling like, "Hey, man, I'm going to buy a gun right now." And you know, before I would give them any any advice and kind of pound them about, okay. Well, now you're going to have to move into a responsible gun owner, right. gun owner, because you yep. don't know anything about being a responsible gun owner. I also first want you to remember this feeling right now of this, helplessness, of yes. fear, of okay. fear and helplessness. Like you, you don't know if you can protect your family. Actually, you do. You know that you can't protect right. your family, and you have to go do this thing and buy this thing so you can. But you don't know what to do, and that's a very dangerous thing. And, and we're on the opposite end of that, not to like gloat, but we're like. We have, we, we have been in a position to provide and protect our family, and you're coming to us for help. So first, never forget this feeling. Second, now let me explain to you what it means to be a responsible gun owner, and it is a pain in the ass. It really is. I mean, that's when we wrote that quarantine song that the whole line stemmed from literally all of us getting hit up. It's like all my anti hunting buds reaching out to me. I know your freezer stay stocked up. Can I get some fresh deer meat? And then went in the AR line. And that was because I had multiple people go, Hey, I'm kind of freaking out right now. Do you have an extra AR? And I'm like, first off, <laughs> that's illegal. Secondly, because you live in California and none of my like lowers are welded together right. or have a bullet button, whatever the whatever fucking the weird California emotional, California whatever the fucking, fucking they decided is. today. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, it's just super bizarre that in in the in the matter of moments in the grand scheme of things someone can change so quickly their belief system on something that we understand the value of and i'm not saying we're completely right but it's like you you get the feeling you get why people go and harvest their own food and have a sustainable food source for months on end because I like contingency there is plans. A divine level of ignorance, though, because I mean, there were people uh, that I grew up with that were literally surprised. Their mind was blown that downtown Seattle grocery stores are running out of food. Yeah. I never thought I would see a grocery store running out no of food. There's no interruption it's in like, food delivery. Right. Uh, That's the most frightening thing. Is yeah. there? There was there was supply. Zero. Like the demand was such that there wasn't supply for it, but there was no interruption to the delivery mechanism right. to bring the food to them. Let's just say the drivers were like, oh, we don't want to drive. Or the stalkers were like, uh, COVID Ma- Imagine much- this, because I brought this up not to interrupt. Imagine if the coronavirus somehow came through a cow. And now all yeah. cattle are just getting fucking massacred across the planet or the country because of a virus. And we have no food supply. Yeah. Like, that's the thing that I think is very interesting. And I hope a positive takeaway at the end of this is there was no food shortage. It was just an influx in demand and the supply chain couldn't keep up with it. But there was no crops getting demolished or there was no cattle or it could, it could, it's very 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 feasible. It's a great example of that. So mad cow disease. Yeah. Mad cow disease. disease. These are great examples. This was like, when we look at it in the perspective, as far as like what the actual overall economic impact in is catastrophic, right? But the impact, the physical impact we're going to have to, more people die of suicide because of the economic correct. impact than we'll have died from COVID. Like there's no, I, there's, there's no zero question. doubt. There's zero doubt. There'll be more depression, depression related causes of death. And then the economic fallouts, the second and third order effects of fucking the pause in the economy will be more detrimental than how many people have purely died so based off of bad forecasts, bad models and panic. You know, I love uh, and guessing. Yeah, this was like bad what, guessing. That's what you. That's guessing what you gotta. Of bad information. You, 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 I, you gotta I, remind I, people a lot. It's like I, I think that we can't. We we gotta push blame too, where it's actually 
you know, where it's deserved, which is when we cut funding to the who, I mean, this is why we put billions of dollars into the organization. That did instance, nothing for us. That did fucking nothing. Actually, that's for not us. true. Because nothing would would would, <laughs> right. would be yeah. an, an even effect. a middle line. Right. Yeah, they, they they negatively impacted <laughs> us because they lied to us because they're hiding China. Yeah. They're protecting China. There's no doubt that the World Health Organization was protecting China and the information that was coming out of there. There's zero doubt. So um, not it's, only defund them, but like they better be held accountable for the tens of thousands and if not hundreds of thousands of lives that are going to be lost. Well, didn't Germany this. already send China a bill? They were the first ones. Yeah, that, well, like, it, was, it was pretty interesting. So, so the, 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 the head of international PR for the WHO was, uh, he's, he's from Switzerland or somewhere, but there's an interview with him. I don't know if you caught this, but there's an interview where, where he would not address Taiwan as a separate state to the, the, the journalist that was asking him questions. And he kept hanging up the phone when she would ask, well, okay, but China is this model. What does Taiwan look like? And he's like, I just answered the question about China. So the independent entity that's supposed to be running information for the, the, the who is still pushing, is propaganda. still pushing Chinese propaganda. They won't even identify Taiwan as a different state from China. I'm like the only motherfuckers on the planet that believe Taiwan and China are one is China. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and WHO, right. And, and the, and the China, WHO, China, right. China. Which, which is now the same, which is now the same China. Thing. Yeah. And I think that goes back to like me, like uh, not, not, I'm not a prepper, but I, I did realize during this whole thing about how prepared I am actually. And I, I didn't really realize that it's just my lifestyle. And I think uh, hopefully the takeaway for a lot of people, uh, unfortunately um, it's based off the tail end of tragedy is how fragile society is and how, quick this could turn into a tribal thing yep. because i mean this is a, a terrible circumstance we're in specific and, and definitely economically that's going to come but it wasn't that bad considering what could happen yeah. and i'm not discrediting no. the situation i'm saying things could be a far lot worse and i don't know what that looks like for everyone and i'm i'm only saying that because i care about the american people and i sometimes are like the world's a fucking crazy pa- we, place we have a man. lot of fucking enemies and obviously when we look at this the, the compounding effects of this if if one of those enemies would have decided to enhance this what situation, was happening, yeah, they were. It would have been a very well. They would have absolutely, if they were successful. Let yeah. me define that. If they well, were I, successful, I think, I think there was a degree. Uh, yeah, you, you talk about interference, mm-hmm. uh, foreign interference. Uh, we'll use the election as the first example in right. 2016. There's no doubt that lots of anti-American. Um, influence was happening, mm-hmm. especially social media, you know, fake news. Um, and I, I, I believe that the same thing happened during this pandemic mm-hmm. where the yeah, you know, feed bre- fear yeah. breeds fear, panic breeds panic, mm-hmm. calm breeds calm, but there's no calm. Right. All of the calm voices were being muted intentionally, systematically being like, oh, we're not going to share these posts. YouTube is like, okay, anything anti-WHO, we're not going to let be distributed. Twitter being like, okay, this p- person is pointing out that this guy got hit by a bus, but we're going to give that cause of death be COVID, not the fact that he got hit by a bus. So I'm, I'm not going to let that post be shared. Um, and also the kind of anti information that was being flooded into the system where nobody knew what real news was. Right. Nobody knew what truth was. Yeah. I mean, we're still in that situation yeah. now. And I, mean, I, I think there's a degree of design by that. I mean, that's, that's the benefit for Russia. That's the benefit for China. Right. That's the benefit for every anti-capitalistic, anti-democracy, mm-hmm. anti-republic country to be like, ooh, what's happening right now in America? This is good. How do we keep this going? And it's just breeding more fear. Yep. How long can we keep the economy down? How long can we keep mm-hmm. people away from their jobs? And they've um, got to be celebrating because they it's are. A, they look are. at look at our state, like like what the, the climate is on social media. We're tearing each other to shreds yeah. over what yeah, we're, we're nobody has there. the information. You know, I've passively been um, anti quarantine because my, my life doesn't have a lot of people. You right. know, it's like I'm shooting um, in helicopters. It's like I have this small group of people that I'm with all the time, like my team and, um, you know, my my, my kind of company guys and uh so there's not a lot of outside connection or interaction with people. And uh, so like, I'm like, my life hasn't changed at all. But if I posted anything about my life not changing, the outrage culture was so visceral. It was so, oh, that means that you, you hate old people or you hate right. people with, diabe- uh, with diabetes or you hate um, everybody that has uh, immune autoimmune disorder or you hate – I was like, wait, because – 
my lifestyle isn't being negatively impacted because of what I do for a living. You're mad at me. That's not even the case. Like you're taking it so far as like, you know, you're, you're insinuating that I don't value human life. Like right. my company's mission statement is to, pre- to preserve and protect human life. That is our mission statement. And they're like, oh, you believe more about the economy than you do about human life. I was like, no, I care human life versus human life. And clearly you don't understand other perspectives. You have a single lens, this monocle that you're viewing everything for you through that is based off of fear. I don't have fear, so I'm just going to live. Right. But the outrage culture was something I've never even seen this bad before. Uh, that's and what we've we seen were, some bad outrage well, culture. Well, that's what yeah. we were talking about. Well, this was, this was the first time in our history really where this one thing affects everybody. Yeah. So like everybody's on, like we were talking about this on a previous show. It's like, yeah, our circles, we've talked about the G watt over the last 20 years because it affects our circles, but this now affects everybody flat out, no matter where you are, this had an effect on you. I would love, um, and I know it, it pieces, pisses people off to like do comparisons to Holocaust, but in, in the things that were enacted in the past, two months in comparison to what Germany enacted from 1938 to 1944, you could see a compar- a, a comparable <laughs> timeline. Just a parallel line. But way faster because we did ours in two weeks. We're talking about people sewing things on, getting stamps yeah. for t- testing positive. No, you can't shop. No, we're going to have to quarantine you. You know, like, no, we're not saying that we have to take infected people and stick them into specific places. Oh, no, we did do that. Right. We did talk about that. We actually built hospitals to do it. You know, like, we literally did what Hitler did in two months and it took him two years to do it, but we did it to ourselves. Like, no, you can't buy seeds. No, you can't buy paint. No, you can't farm. No, you can't get on the ocean. No, you can't go to public land. No, you can't even go outside. No, you can't go shop. Like we did this in in two months, which is a question because I don't quite understand. I don't understand those decisions when I, and I've never been able to find, you've never made a decision out of fear where you close down a beach where People can keep social distancing. All you have to do is say, hey, don't come within six to 10 feet of each other. Lay out your blankets. Yeah, and you're fine. Have fun. You're fun. You're, I, go for it. So I don't understand. Has anybody uh, heard a clear articulation why they were shutting down beaches and parks? I watched a video the other day of a woman getting arrested at a in park. a park yeah. in Boise because she had her kids at the fucking playground. And I'm like. Yeah, the pay- playground was closed, though. But I still Close. don't quite understand. Close, yeah. We paid for that playground. But, but and that's happening? the thing is where it's 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 a it's a compounding effect where a governor or a mayor puts out some sort of directive. It's on a police officer's interpretation of that a, a roll a steamroller of fear now, and now they're gonna people are starting to take this into their own interpretation and enforcing it. Is, is there so zero? Like, there's zero onus of responsibility on the citizens to actually pay taxes to enforce a social distancing appropriate distance there's there's zero responsibility essentially what they're saying is you can't be responsible for any of your actions so we'll just shut down every i'm i'm clear i'm just asking the question so is there a reasoning have you guys heard this that they just they have to shut down every public place because citizens cannot be trusted to enforce their own social distancing. Yeah, one of the one of the cool things of why the, all the models were wrong is they didn't think that the social distancing would be as effective as it is, right? right. So we're talking two point something million people lives that are going to be lost. Now we're like, ooh, wait, actually it's going to be like sixty thousand. Sorry right. about that big difference. The delta between sixty thousand and two point something million. Um, we didn't think that you guys, you people, would do the right thing. Right. Guess what? America was founded on individual responsibility. Mm -hmm. Like we carved our existence out of the woods. We fought Indians. We raised our own food. food. We took our muskets and we got rid of the British. And now here we are. That was all individual responsibility. But then everyone in the Beltway and in these metropolises are like, they, they, they are so disconnected to what the American spirit looks like when we decide to do something. And that's, we just decided, cool. All right, if this is what we're supposed to do, we'll do this. And... Then while we're doing the right thing, all of our elected officials that are supposed to be taking care of their constituents are doing the opposite. They're just trying to grab more power right. using fear, which and is so dis. Michigan is it Michigan that got uh, their, oh, yeah. their executive power taken away because their governor yep. uh, halted the sale of seeds and things like that. And paint, like, yeah, paint. can't farm. Yeah. Paint, paint. You can't buy paint. Why? 
because it wasn't essential to the well-being of the individual. Those are like, <laughs> this, this, is, she said, this is how you get power. You can't away. buy seeds. You couldn't go to the store and buy a ah. tomato packet to plant tomatoes. Are you kidding Verbatim, me? this is her quote. It's cold outside. You wouldn't even use those freedoms now. End quote. Use those freedoms now. And that's almost like, what was what was the other quote about? Uh, but they took her executive power away? Yes. Oh, it, my it, God. Three days ago, it was it was. Pulled. It's all right. She's up to re-election in 2020. Great. Oh, I can't everybody, wait for that one. Everybody listening. See you later. <laughs> you, you look Bye, at bitch. every single one of your elected officials, and you look at what they did, and whether they protected their constituents or they didn't. And if you don't see a shift or change about who's in office, then shame on you. This is your fault. Look forward to the next one. Well, don't come asking me for deer meat. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, here's a question, and this is not my opinion necessarily. This is just a, a counter argument to that as far as, well, what if the thing to stop this is social distancing to get the economy back as quick as possible, but people aren't listening? And by not listening, going to beaches, getting the infection rate higher, which subsequently infects more people and more deaths are related to yeah. it, which shuts down the economy even longer. Like, th- there, there could be an argument on that side. Well, people need to be babysitted and micromanaged. Yeah, I, I think and I'm not every, saying that's what I believe. Yeah. I'm just, I'm well, just saying, cause I know that's a lot of people. I had the idea the other, like I, it just popped into my head because we, we have a close personal friend that was, at, uh, activated and sent to New York city as a, as a doctor to, to jump in this. And I just called him and I was like, Hey, I was just thinking about this. How many of your staff have you lost? You guys are around infected people all right. day long. How many of you have you lost since Zero. you got there? He said one. Uh, like, which, like not, not death. Like, how many of you just lost of the force gotcha. to be right. sick? One. So wait a minute. What? Yeah. You guys are literally living in these wards for fucking 18 hours a day, yeah. and you've dropped one yeah. out of, uh, he, had, he said, 110 staff that yeah. were, that Man, were pushed I, I think we just have to view everything that we ever do through the, the lens of either dangerous freedom or peaceful slavery. And um, peaceful slavery is, okay, you tell me what I need to do so I will be safe. And in, in a form, I'm, I'm a slave to that idea where you're going to tell me and provide everything right. I need for my existence and my safety and my welfare and mm-hmm. my families. The other lens is dangerous freedom. That's where as an individual, I am going to take the responsibility, the onus is on me to do the right thing if I am going to be able to provide and protect for my family. And if you look through history, at when decisions were made through those two lenses, it's very clear where one lens goes. You know, we're, we're talking Stalin and Mao and Hitler. Right. And then you have the other lens, which is these beautiful things like motherfucking democracy and freedom. And it always comes down to dangerous no, freedom amazing. or peaceful slavery. Dangerous freedom or peaceful slavery. I love that. Those are your lenses. Which one? Which one? Which one? Go fuck yourself. I, this is what I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah, I, it, it's interesting because when I saw it, what I saw kind of unfolding was, and it's really hard because you're sifting through the information, Crocs. you know, across the, 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 the internet and different people that are commenting, whether it's on the internet or, you know, guys that you're talking to, because in Salt Lake, before I left there, life didn't look any different. <laughs> there were people in the parks. Uh, nobody was being arrested that I know of in the parks. Like, in we purpose. saw people. There you go. So it's not we saw business. people running every day. There are people driving. There was like no change to any of the day to day as far as like when I, when I say the economic impact, when I drive down the road, obviously I would see these businesses, they were closed, but nobody behaved differently. If anything, there were more people in the streets, more people in the parks, more people in each one of these public places. But the thing I didn't see I didn't see people except for teenagers because they're teenagers, right? They're like hanging around and loitering in smaller groups in close proximity. So people they already have taking, each other's germs anyways. Yeah. People so. were taking their, their, you know, social distancing rules. They were applying them into their daily lives and they were being respectful and they were being adults essentially. Right. And the other piece is if you weren't carrying hand sanitizer around and you weren't sanitizing your hands and exercising some of those things, because if you didn't know, I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know how, how contagious this was. I didn't know what the spread of it was. So we erred on a very safe side and a very conservative side, which was, hey, let's put in place a work from home criteria early on to protect the people and the company to flatten the curve internally while we kind of look at what's happening, but we haven't had one case in the company. We've not had one person test positive in 238 people. Not one person has tested positive in the entire company across three states, 
with over 12 remote employees in yeah. different states across the union. So not one person has been affected. That's not me, you know, breaking my arm to pat myself on the back. I'm saying there's not even enough clear internal data from this there, for there's, us. There's zero. There's zero. <laughs> well, I think that so the majority fucking... of that points back to misinformation and the majority of all politicians lacking in any sense of leadership. And they're just knee jerk reacting. I think it's the same thing with gun laws, right? It's just across the board, just blap, fucking send it. Huh. And, and then that's the problem. Yeah. So that's an interesting one. When we look at the, the, the laws and the way that they've changed, has anybody kept up as far as uh, what has been, have we changed anything? Has there been any add-ons oh, yeah. and bolt-ons? Yeah. So I the have bolt-ons a, to this. I have a living document um, right. on Sheepdog Response that's updated. We have a bunch of, of Intel analysts mm-hmm. that, that work. And so every 24, 48 hours, we update this document. And a lot of it has like regional, local, state law changes. Right. Um, you know, like California, in, in specific counties, there were, so not only would the governor try to do something, but then like the county sheriff Right, would try to do something like okay, gun stores not essential businesses. Um, actually, as a matter of fact, if they sell ammo or they sell guns, regardless if the, if that's their sole thing that they're selling, not even like a gun store, but like an academy, mm-hmm. let's close those things down. You got you got to shutter all the guns and ammo, or you can't even buy them right now. And then they literally tried to go to every single place that sold sell, sold guns and ammo and cone off where you're able to buy that you couldn't buy guns and ammo. As soon as COVID kicked off, the mayor uh, or the governor of Michigan, they took engineer's tape or like caution tape and wrapped seed stands. So you couldn't buy a watermelon packet of seeds. Um, So gun laws across the whole entire state or across all the union in all the states, they tried to be more strict. Right. Um, You know, like the, 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 the more blue the state was, the, the crazier the attempts were to right. whether it was gun grabbing california the entire state tried to pass legislation that uh, nevada oh nevada's a great example they were going to say any semi-automatic weapon would then be considered an ar any cinema, pistol didn't matter what what the weapon was if it was semi-automatic it was an assault rifle if it was an assault rifle it would fall under their their d- additional ban, right strict guidelines of what could be purchased did you see the uh the thing last night with the nypd they posted that that picture of the guns that they pulled out of that guy's yeah. house that was you, there was four thousand comments in 10 minutes like uh, <laughs> i i didn't see it so you oh, to, okay yeah so that's like the so back of my truck a, a, a precinct <laughs> uh of the nypd like facebook page post this look at all these illegal firearms that we that we took from this from this guy because his neighbor reported him or something like that. So they, they have this picture of the guns and it's majority all bolt actions. Oh, yeah. And they're crap. It was just, they're just all 4,000 oh. like, like, yeah, yeah, that's called a, a light day in Texas, New York. Like they're just <laughs> they're <horrible>. demolished. Of, <laughs> Thank God you idiots are protecting us from these bolt actions. Like, <laughs> uh, hopefully there's not a turkey running through the street. Yeah. <laughs> that was, thing would be in big trouble. Thank God you guys are protecting us from those bolt action 24 inch guns. <laughs> pump <shot. laughs> See, I'm too Shannon. stupid to figure all this out, man. I just, I just like sometimes I sit back and I'm like, this is I'm going to live in an island one day. There's some weird motherfuckers out there and like. It's just Evans it's, it's a it's weird Evans Island. place. I want to live yeah. there. I'm not scared. I'm, <laughs> no, I mean, like, this isn't braggadocious or or I'm not scared of these diseases, pandemics. Um, but people scare me. Yes, you know? yes. And uh, like, I was never worried about anything. I was worried about people yeah. being being dangerous. I'm worried about because like, they're dangerous. Yeah, now, because they are. People are dangerous. They're erratic. They're emotional. They're they're ignorant and. Ignorant, emotional people are fucking really dangerous. They and, get, they and get not really working. unpredictable. Like, yeah. Without cash flow. So like like these last few weeks, I'm on edge at a gas station because I just think that's like a, a hit point. Somebody yeah. can, can can come at you while you're getting gas. Because yeah. like, like, these I, people, there's there's a lot of people out there that are broke. There's a lot of people that, can't, that aren't working right now. Like, but, but there's a lot of people that are exploitive in nature where they'll take an opportunity like this where they know where, you know, People are down. They know that they're they're vulnerable at this point, and they'll exploit weakness in people. So that was one of a, a, a huge concern that I was thinking of early, which is the elderly people in the United States being kind of locked and confined essentially into their homes based on the preliminary information of COVID. And then 
a bunch of people being off work and then a bunch of people that are exploitive in nature, what are they doing to take advantage of, you know, I, I, I think a, a, a very vulnerable portion of our society and early and on, a time where they could get away, they, they have a higher well, chance yeah, to get away with it. Law enforcement's you know, yes, consumed with other things. These were things where I was like, man, shit bags do shit bag behavioral things, right? We all know yeah. this. So I was trying to think of well, you, when, you, when you're the chief of police in Detroit or wherever, and you say, we're no longer going to start you know, in, in, enforcing the law. They're like, Cha-ching! oh my God, are you kidding me? Well, Why would you start about you're, a call? You're already that's seeing like a, a lot call of that. to all the dirt bags saying, Hey, it's time to exploit yeah. people. We, we we no longer will be responding to burglary. I don't and, understand and, why and they vehicle would, burglary. They would put that out. Like, I don't understand. Well, they're, uh, they're, they're, I don't have the exact numbers or whatever, but I was talking to a, a friend of mine who's a journalist, um, a pretty high level journalist in New York. You have a friend that's a journalist. I, I do. Yeah. All right. Mm. But, what, why is that weird? What's like his, Marty Scoglin's a friend of mine, and he's what's a journalist. His name, Matt? What's his he's a good name? journalist. Anyways, yeah. um, but Marty. talking about the crime rates and murder rates, and how I think I think she said the murder rate doubled in New York, and the crime rate they can't even pin it right now. Like, Seriously, it's getting it's getting bad because the reporting is not there. Right. Um, and I I would literally have to go look at the numbers, but it's, but we it's just want to talk dr- about ventilators d- drastically yeah. Yeah. increased. Yeah, and and that's like the weirdest thing for me. It's like do the shit that matters. Like support the people in the hospitals that are taking care of the ill and sick and the elderly yeah. little get, shout out get, to the first responders and everybody in the hospital right now love you guys seriously like and that's the thing it's like uh, you know you, you can't blanket treatment this whole thing you have to look at the economy you have to look at the elder you have to look at the crime and then allocate resources that will make changes in a positive light within those segmented places and instead of just you know it's just i don't know well, i, there's I have no, lots of opinions and i'm on no, three hours of sleep so i don't sound yeah, too smart there's but. no there's nothing that says just telling everybody to stay inside for a couple of months is going to do anything because right. once we all go back, if you we'll plant see. that one thing in the center, it just spreads right. again. What happened here? Like, uh, filming, you know, yeah, this, this is a rough film day. I like, you know, I make sure I always have a couple like scrapes on me and nice. stuff. Yeah. yeah. There's a video that, that he has to see what's before the, he leaves. What's, what's been happening over at sheepdog with, with you guys? Have you guys seen an increase in business? Oh, yeah. In, in a, of this? It's, I, I think all of us, um, like on, on this side of freedom are kind of like, yes, right. Welcome. First time gun owners. Yeah. Welcome to the family. Right now. Let's, let's show you how to be responsible. Um, in the same token, it's like first time that you have thought about how to protect your family. Um, not going to throw stones at you. Right. But awesome. Welcome yeah. to what the, it, we, we cannot, um, respond to the amount of, of people asking for help. Right. And, um, you know, like, in a really cool, encouraging way, where if I'm going to say, do I have hope for the future? It's what I have seen directly from people responding to this, being like, okay, I'm going to take my family's well-being, my my family's protection, my family's food seriously, and how can I prepare? Because like, thank God, I, I mean, one death is too many, but thank God this was not bad, right? You know, but this did show that we were wholly ill prepared mm-hmm. um for what could have been you know like yeah. if, if this is like a 2.5 mortality rate and the, that 2.5 are the super sick or the super old you know like what if it was a hiv type mortality you know right. where you're talking 60 70 percent right. with current day medicine uh, with the same infection infectious rate you're like yeah that's yeah, just we, pro- this is a problem we, we the Earth missed an asteroid on this one, yeah, quite yeah. literally. Like we, yeah. we missed. We missed you don't think fucking, you yeah, don't it think created China, a tidal wave, but it missed the. You don't think yeah. China has worse stuff in that lab? Oh yeah. You know, oh, thank yeah. God it was it was just a bat that was doing some gross stuff that got on an employee that got out. You yeah. know, that's what it's looking like. Yeah. What happened? Thank God. It was just a, a stupid gross bat from a yeah. lab. Well, that's the silver lining in all this for me. And I've quoted this before. It's like, how do you have the unity of September 12th without the tragedy of September 11th? And I think the unfortunate reality of the human condition is people become so ignorant and absorbed in the, the safety of society without realizing the sacrifice required to create that and sustain yeah. it. I think for a lot of us, like we've been through, and not us, but like people that are you know, define themselves as self uh, responsible and, and protecting their own safety, man, we know things can go south real fucking quick. You can go on 30 hits and not get into one gunfight. You get lackadaisical and forget your one time, one, two, three batteries in your EOTech and you get in a gunfight and your ass is dead. I mean, 
it only takes once for shit to go south real quick, real fast. And I think that everybody needs that tool in their toolbox to understand, like, I might run out of food. I might run out of water. I might, and it's not saying everybody in the world needs to be a prepper, but you have to have that in the back of your head. And then you make the individual choice whether or not you want to react to that. And I hope this is a little inclination to, to the American public. And, 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 and unfortunately, there's a lot of tragedy that's going to come out of this. Yeah. Like you were saying, suicides, deaths, be, yeah. and... Psychological but, issue. But, yeah, but I hope super. there's some silver lining. I, I I truly do. I I do. I think like I think that prepper, for instance, because we even say it in a somewhat derogatory way at times, because it's directly associated with a a, a weird guy. Yeah. Right? It's 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 like this image of a prepper is directly associated with a guy that's like, tin, hey, dude, hat, yeah. you you can't put on more knives on your person. You know what I mean? Like, and, and two. If you're going to carry 20 knives, dude, maybe just carry an extra gun. I don't know what the fuck is going on with you, but like, you know, you know what I mean? We've yeah. all, we well, know all it's, the, it's, it's the weird the, knife guy that's got yeah. like 20 of them. But now like, I want, whoa, yeah, but then I got this like one the, here and this one here. The networks like, dude, do it to us as well Glock because. Carry a and a double stack mag, the, you're fucking good. The, like, come on. The shows about preppers, they find the craziest they, of the crazy. The so it's like when you, that, it, it just further defines that word for but you. But the normal because, prepper. Yeah. That was the first phone call everybody made as yes. if they were in jail. Like, who do I call? Yes. Oh, yes. man, I'm, I'm going to call Evan, man, because Evan has how, you know, how much, how many freezers do you have full of meat? You know, like, like literally we were the first people that they yeah. called and we're not the crazy prepper. We're not, we're not on not. those shows, but we were just ready. And you could be right a hundred times and everything could go right a hundred times, but it takes one time for you to be wrong and not prepared. And then it's like, holy crap, man, I'm not ready for this. It's, yeah. it's so funny because when you text me, you're like, you got a sat phone? And I was like, what? Come on, man. Yeah. Duh. Bitch. Bitch. <laughs> you talking crazy? About? Like, well, send me that number then, huh? <laughs> Give me that digits. Well, I think the takeaway in that, right, is not like, look how awesome guys like us are. It's just like, I, I believe in life, you have to have that life insurance. And that's just like a contingency plan to your, your current lifestyle. Yeah. It's we were joking on the last podcast. Like I didn't have a debit card till I was 27 yeah. or a credit card till I was like 27 years old because I've always managed my finances to at least have a couple months. And I know some people are in unfortunate circumstances where it's not, but I'm saying if you're in a place to do that, you should be doing that. In my own opinion, it's your life, but that would be my guidance. But you didn't start like that. This is the point that and to even your point earlier, where if people take, a lot of hate because of their current lifestyle. I built my lifestyle around being autonomous, being able to. We, want, we built, we created our reality based on our experience. Got and lots our of choices. You want to know how fucking you weird my family is? Choices. I was living in Los know. Angeles, broke as fucking a joke. All I had was a Smith and Wesson Model Thirty Nine. My father gave me a little nine millimeter pistol. I was L.A. living at like fucking paycheck to paycheck in a shitty ass apartment with a roommate and my brothers and i had a fallout plan if something ever went crazy we had the exact location in santa barbara harbor where we're gonna fucking steal a boat go to the coast let it go down and then we're gonna push north and take our families like we had the whole fucking plan mapped out and i know i'm a little crazy for saying that but it's like it was the best contingency plan i like this plan can we (laughs) have a boat plan (laughs) please it was the best contingency plan with the means that i had to fucking okay at least i know the direction i'm going if yeah. shit goes south it wasn't like well that's come, actually a pretty good me. plan for for an age and access to what you had well yeah, i mean i was straight out of range of town good. my brother's marines and so we're I like we'll like hit it. dad's house we'll get all of his guns we'll push to the harbor we'll exfil him we'll push north in the boat yeah. as far as we can on the coast because who knows what's happening inland but, it, but it, <laughs> and one of the things i was trying to say was um is that People that are pushing negativity about the way other people live. Like, oh, it must be easy for you. It's like, none of us are celebrities, man. None of us have had easy professions. I mean, fuck, I think you did it. <laughs> the, the joke you were on, what was it called? The, hard was, to kill. Yeah, hard to fucking kill, yeah. which is like, you're, you're a crazy person. Yeah, like, super dumb. You're a crazy person. <laughs> We've never had like a silver spoon. I don't think any of us in here, we were talking about this. Like, they JT, all make fun of me. JT had the rich parents. His dad was a enlisted guy in the navy <laughs> they're like yeah you you grew up with the rich parents with the rich parents <laughs> his dad was a rich yeah. guy in the navy yeah. it's like my dad man. was a cop yeah you know like come on dude man. we built this reality and uh, there's a big portion of this where it's, it's it's like we built redundancy and more importantly i crafted this as an early age i never wanted to be reliant on other people yep. my dream of being a green beret one of the biggest fucking things that like drove me to do that was, and this was 
obviously Green Beret marketing and propaganda <laughs> back in the day. This wasn't reality. It was like, you know, eat things and make a billy goat puke and you can go out and survive off the land with uh, nothing but this, yeah. your pet snake and a fucking dagger or whatever, right? It's just like so – it's it's total bullshit. But <laughs> – <laughs> Tim's You've been had, Tim. You've been <laughs> had. News to me. I wish, I wish being an SF guy taught me to just like walk into the middle of the jungle with nothing but a loincloth on and just survive there yeah. infinitely, right? Did they teach you that? Because nope. they didn't teach me that. No. It would have to be a very, very small loincloth. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, well, we've had you in a loincloth you and you I saw how small it was. One. But that's what I yeah. wanted, right? That's a lifestyle that I chose. That's the fucking direction. That's the azimuth but, I've been yeah. the, the single word there was you chose. Right. You know, like all of our positions and, you know, I, I hope that when, when you're looking at, okay, what should I do moving forward? Um, look to people that you called. When you picked up that phone and you're like, what, who, 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 what should I do? What should I prepare? Right. What gun should I buy? Um, how do I get training? What what YouTube channel should I subscribe to to, to try and learn about this thing? Um, like, remember all of those questions that you were asking and the people that you were asking them. And then moving forward, make your ch- your choices to direct your life so that you don't have to do them again. I like the, pho- like the phone call that I got from you. <laughs> I don't have to ask this, but you good? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I you guys, you guys wait, 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 wait. The only thing I got from Tim was he goes, just so you know, everything from Austin to San Marcos will be mine. You can have up to San Marcos. So he literally built guidelines early on of true. where the, where the limited of a vance yeah, was. Yeah, and we would fist bump as tribal leaders. And I was yeah. like, you fair be, enough. You can have San Marcos as long as I get. Seriously. No, no, no. As long as I get you Braunfels because that place is awesome. Like as we started carving out who was going to get what in Texas, I was going to get everything north of San Marcos, the river and all the way up to pretty much Oklahoma is like, this is freedom. This land. is now mine. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what you're going to name your land south of San Marcos to, to include San Antonio all the way down the Mexican border. You can have as much Mexico as you want. It'd now. be freedom on land, and uh, then we'd have a dispute over the names. I'm actually, <laughs> I'm actually the secretary of state in the freedom on land, okay. so if you want to discuss border okay. uh, disputes, Matt, go ahead and go through Matt me. Matt discussed nationality criteria, but most of it was around like – what gender would be allowed to be in Freedom Online? Freedom Online is eighty five percent female. And that an can be transgender program. too. I'm yeah. cool with that. There you know? was there was a he had a plan on how to get to that eighty five percent by pushing them to own. Freedom On. Yeah. I was like, man, Tim's a better leader than me. I heard they had more food Especially supply for up there. The above fifty category. Yeah, well, I have a closed border <laughs> policy, and that closed border. I'm not saying that we had like asset liability, but Maybe we had in the asset category what jobs were available to be considered inclusion into our new society and what jobs would be categorized as a liability and they were not included. I think we should have it. I think we should make a. <laughs> this uh, is a joke, by the way. I think guys. we should kind make a joke. We should yeah, make I mean, a, we, we, we did talk, talk about, about no, 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 this. No. <laughs> I think we need to, to have an illustration done of what Texas looks like a, after a full blown apocalypse so people know where your, where your state's yeah. going to be. Yeah, so who's, who's going to California? What? Who's getting California? Well, it depends. Like, like how, Jocko. Yeah, Jocko's you know, taking You know Cali. you'd have to fight him. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah, so Crenshaw's going to take Houston up pretty early. much to to St. Er, yeah. Charles, mm-hmm. Lake Charles. Yeah. So, like, that's going to be, yeah. that's gonna be you know, the I don't pi- want any pirate that. land. Yeah. Um, I bet he'd go all the way down to the coast, too. Oh, yeah. 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 Could he see that far? I don't yeah. know. I, w- I bet he would stay on a ship yeah. the entire time. Wait, let's work terms real quick. We can okay. both fish in the river, right? We're not going to fight over who can fish. Yeah, but you're on the south side. I'm on the north side of the river. Right. right. Okay, no problems. But no overfishing. Yeah, but you guys are a, you guys are a, a, a conjoint... <laughs> a, a, you you guys are a coalition country. So for, yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. When like, Mexico's yeah, like, yeah, hey, yeah. that wall, we don't respect it anymore. It's like... Hey, uh, Freedom on Land. This is uh, Freedom yeah, Northland. Yeah. <laughs> Freedom yeah. Northland. <laughs> Freedom on Land. Freedom What's on. yours called? Heaven's Island. Yeah, just Heaven's <laughs> Island. I don't know. I, I don't know. I think I would go north, man. I would, yeah, I would you, be the guy you'd taking wanna, north. Well, the problem Claim is, Idaho. like, if you go north, you know, when you're talking Idaho and on Montana, like, nothing's changed for them. You're going to yeah. have to fight every every one of these assholes. Like, like none of those hey, Andy, guys. Can I... Um, that federal land that you You're just right. took is Andy land. I'm taking yeah, and Vegas. It's Andy's Island is just Whitefish, Montana. It's where Andy Stumps is like nothing's changed for uh-huh. him. They've just appointed him. Talk about the way I don't want to die is by a bow from oh. Cameron Haynes or, or Andy. Yeah. 
I would take High Vegas. on the list of not so, yeah. I want to die. So Vegas would be mine. I'd wear a crown <laughs> and I'd move into the top of the Luxor. Like, yeah. <laughs> but you're fighting Randy but, and Mindy. But you guys, yeah. you well, don't they think would like, be part of the coalition. Oh, okay, okay, like, yeah. uh, you but, think they would elect you as the leader? Uh, yeah. Hey, yeah. She's, well, run, Randy's she's running Randy, for office. Randy doesn't want to. Is she really? She is. Mindy is? Mindy is. Yes. She's running for credit congressional seat. Yes, she is. Holy. We, Jared okay. and I had a conversation the other day. About I her? No, I never addressed this because he said he would go back in time and he would work under Washington is one of his one of his generals knowing what he knows now about military tactics and i was yeah. like so you would work for washington is that what you said and he's like yeah i would work for washington i was like hmm, okay i don't know if i'm gonna go back in time i think i might rewrite some history i don't know <laughs> yeah. I, think, I don't know if i'd be working for him you know yeah, 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 that like, hey. guy, well that though. wasn't part of the deal it wasn't like we didn't say that you could rewrite history you had to go fight a war yeah what what yeah. war did you want to fight he would take know. it over he would be the yes, general well, yeah he yes he would but, you don't yeah. like to be supreme leader you no. like to be like department yes, leader so would you yeah. include in the new constitution that none of any one of those individual amendments matter if there's people that are sick Oh, no, I, you would admit that? I, I, I definitely, I, I would say, you know, in a time of sickness, nothing matters, right? Yeah. Because it's no just, guns, no, no freedom guns, of speech, nothing. no freedom of assembly, no, no, no yeah, freedom yeah. of religion. Don't worry about any of that stuff. Don't worry I about it. I see your callback. I see your callback. I see what you did there. I see what you did there. Yeah. Well, yeah. <sighs> what are Tim we doing, Kennedy, what are we doing next? What are we doing next? I don't even I know. I mean, I, I think we still should be discussing our states. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like, this like, is fun. Yeah. You guys like, would come it. vacation at mine. Uh, You'd no. be like, uh, Jared got what? sick with a coli from his own house earlier. We talked about that. Yeah, he's got, he got sick Do you want, from Thank you for house. that, though, because um, like the coop cleaning thing, uh, uh, I definitely – I just wear one of the respirator masks, but I never – wore like protective glasses and back to my porn days i remember when they made me wear protective <laughs> lenses right so oh i should be doing that if there's chicken shit flying through the air it makes sense that i should wear you know protect so like here's my analysis on that i think jared just web MD'd. how can a man get a coli and at the yeah. 17th page it said just washing poop and he went past raw chicken gas station food and all these other frequencies that he has and, and then that last one was like shit. there's I how i convinced evan and matt that that wasn't my eating habits <laughs> yeah that's well, exactly what no, you did no because you gotta go you gotta You're think right. backwards you're right like my eating habits have improved since this whole thing went down. Number one, Jared, I left the ranch two days ago yeah. and you pulled out a piece of pizza that had been there for three hours in your hot car and started it, it eating it from warm. the gas station. It was it was yeah. warm because it was hot. Food is off the limits first. Second. But then you can't say your eating habits you, haven't changed when that was literally th that my body is used to this. He's so like Tim <laughs> has been training his body for combat. <laughs> You've been training your body to eat dumpster food. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You so it's choices. It's too, it's, you've optimized your performance in your gut biome for that. Wait, I mean I just realized I want Jared on my uh freedom on side because now I can have him eat random berries that I don't know what they are. He'll get mushrooms. mildly yeah, sick yeah, yeah, when yeah. they would kill other people. Yeah, right. And that's a good yeah. test bed for the food so I can, yeah. you know, feed my amazing army. I mean, I had three rotten swordfish steaks and I recovered in one day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, got, I got sick. I was one of the last planes coming back from Africa when this whole thing started. Yeah. Uh, literally, I, I, I think there was like three or four flights f that happened after my flight before they're like, ipsy. But I'm in this crap North African city and we're at the airport. I have a four-hour layover bef before I get to make my international flight. And I was like, I'm going to go eat some food because I'm hungry. And um, this is when I needed your stomach because I was on this plane. And I was like, okay, I have a, I have a really great seat. But stewardess, can I sit as close to the bathroom as possible? <laughs> like maybe right next to it. So anytime that light is green, I can just go in there because I was throwing up out of my asshole the oh, whole entire oh, flight. Oh, that's it's the worst. Yeah, I and I have two packets of white because, again, contingency. Right. What? And those were gone. Do you know but, anything uh, uh, about the reports this morning? The, that raid in Nigeria, they saved like 86 people or something like that and took down a, a whole bunch of fucking people. I saw I it when I was coming in. I was figuring oh. Are you asking if I... Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But, uh, that's, all I, that's all I got about that. <laughs> yes. That it, it looked good. Yeah. That, that looked goes, successful. It did. <laughs> Okay, OPSEC. So back to having <laughs> toilet paper. That's, that's a funny thing, too, because I don't know about you, but it's the small things you do in life to prep for 
logistically what you're going to do. I never know how my health might be if I get a food poisoning. I always travel with extra pair of board shorts, ranger panties, and a t-shirt just in case. 100% true. If you went into my go bag. Yeah, go into my bag right now and, in the office. And I'll, always. I'll, I'll add another item that he always has, and I can I always know that he's the guy to ask for it. What? what do you think that is? Me? Tweezers. What? Butt wipes. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. He butt always wipes. Has butt wipes. Those That's another wipes. thing I didn't realize. So, when the toilet paper shortage, I walked in my supply closet at my house and I had like 3,000 wet what's wipes. What's your brand? Uh, I like go the dude wipes. No, they're too expensive. They Cost expensive. per unit is at like seventy five percent over market value. I go with. The, <laughs> I'm just so, saying. Listen, listen. I'm a guy <laughs> like you. I'm willing to pay a premium price for a premium quality product. They but when it's a though. wet, yeah. But still, I, I have a septic thick. tank. I'm not trying to get in there. I don't puncture that. They're thing. flushable. Yeah. I, no, they are. But still, so are we talking like H E B flushables? H E B flushables or hey, Costco? Be very careful when you buy the non flushable butt wipes. Yeah, yeah don't do those. Do that yeah, That's no, thing. Yeah. Baby wipes don't work. Individual they have to be flushable. Responsibility. You know, mm -hmm. no, no. If, I've, if, I've just I've been using the flushable ones because the kids for forever. You know, yeah. I mean, we. So we have. I mean, that's that's just like. We just use those, and that's what we use in the house. We've got like a combination of toilet paper and flushable butt wipes. I've been, I've been saving a bunch. Everywhere. I've been saving a bunch of money because I just got a detachable shower head. Oh, nice! Yeah, there you yeah. go. Yeah. It's yeah. I don't have. So I haven't you shit toilet paper. in the shower and you? <laughs> no, you, no, 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 no. I'm not a. I know. I am not a monster. Have you Please. ever done any sewage repair yourself? Ooh, no, no, no. So absolutely, I had family come over the holidays, and they used the wrong butt wipes. Yeah, absolutely. I as as like, you know fairly successful as we are, I still will not pay someone to clean out um, a clogged shithole. I will do wow. that. I will get into my sewer and I will pull out the non-flushable wipes that are that are nope. preventing the leach field from happening. I had a septic issue and I paid someone to fix that, nope. Tim. Self-contained breathing apparatus, scuba mask, and off Yuck. we go. Being able to do something uh, doesn't always necessarily mean you have to I do it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I I know them, but I, I never just, do them. Because see, full circle, back to yeah, idiot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if you ever do have a pool party with us, do not touch his swimming mask. That is not allowed. Yeah, he gets real mad. He gets super. That's the one, the I most have, anal I, thing I've I ever have, seen I him have about. Three. Well, because you were trying to touch it. <laughs> right. Are you like one of the guys? Like, oh, here's a mask. No, it's no. just him in general. I try <laughs> very hard. I've been essentially in quarantine standards just with him for a for long seven period of time years. because I've seen his life. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've seen it from afar. I've seen it up close. I understand how unsanitary he is just in general. So All I see right there, Evan, is up, like, hey, you want to want to try this soda I just bought? And it just flash forward back to like, you know, when he was single and there was just seven girls in his house. No, no, and you're that, like, that, that's what I'm referring super to. Super good on that he, one. He has nope. exchanged no bodily soda. fluid with so many rando uh, it's, people it's it's not it's you the, can't be specific yeah yeah it's I, like I just and Gender, i saw yeah. it with mouth kissed you know what i mean yeah. it, I, I saw it and it, was, it was like watching a a really uh, disgusting homeless person eat rotten food every day yeah. like that's what his life yeah literally. but you know if, if i took a hypodermic needle full of like aids mm -hmm. um covid and i like injected it into his neck all of those things from the, what the military has put into him and yeah. what he has put into himself. He might yeah. be the cure for COVID. He <laughs> might be. All the strands, yeah, all the like, corona you know strands. What? It's not worth it. And it's just like it starts squirting back out yeah. of his own neck. It's like I don't want him to try to be in this host. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. and, that, and that's not me being negative. No, not at all. Just saying like I've I mean, that's seen how your they, lifestyle. They talked to me at the hospital. I was the only one <laughs> yeah. there. They were like, oh, no, we haven't had anybody in, but you somehow got E. coli? What the <laughs> fuck were you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I was playing in chicken shit. Yeah. Yeah, literally, it was like vaporized into my eyes. Well, they asked. They were like, well, did you eat anything weird? I was like, no, nothing out of the ordinary. Did you do anything mm. weird? <laughs> I just pressure wa pressure wash my chicken, chicken, chicken shit. <laughs> now, are you are are you hunting this fall? Are you going on any elk hunts? Are you going yep. any, where are you going? Yeah. Um, so I try to not work from the end of November to January. Okay. Um, so one of the reasons why you're like, why are you always so busy? It's so that I have three months of me doing what I want. So N New Mexico is always a hit. Colorado mm -hmm. is always a hit. Um, way southwest Texas, like Marathon. Mm -hmm. um, I have like friends that have eighty thousand acres, um, and uh, like That's a lot of acres. It is more. I've never seen the same. I've hunted there a few times, and I've never seen like the same portion of land twice. And wait, they're like hectare acres. 
the even bigger ones. What are those? I don't even understand how big an acre know. is. Yeah, it's like it's like four acres. And anyways, the the, right. the measurement of my of how much land this is, it's like it starts in Marathon, it goes up to Big Bend, and then it goes down oh, wow. to the Mexican border. Wow, that's, I mean, that's huge. Just, I can't even calculate, like right. understand how much land that is. Um, it's and they have Rhode Island. They're overrun. Yes, it is. Yeah. They're overrun with elk. Really? Like overrun with uh, elk. What, on, what's this, what's this guy's... <laughs> yeah, where's this at? <laughs> Not like, a no. chance. Come on! <laughs> <laughs> hey, motherfucker. F- freedom, Tim Freedom <laughs> Island shit. Come on, don't yeah, this, this, this is an ambassador deal. deal. Fishing rights here. This is an ambassador <laughs> deal right now. Yeah. Obviously, I have the fish rights. So where, where that elk that's on Andy's back, where that was taken in Utah, we're going this fall in September. So we're going... Like, everybody's going there. Yeah. What? September there is like... January here, so I'm yeah. down. I'm the camp supervisor for the trip. Jared's the camp w- supervisor. Will you come on a hunt with us? That's I what I was to. trying to okay. get to. Yeah, yeah. Let's which do is it. Tim should go with us on that hunt because yeah. it's it's yeah. going to be an September. epic hunt. Yeah, it's in September. Cut. Okay. It's like 21st through 27th. Yeah. Army still gets to do things with oh, me. Oh yeah. Yeah, but so, you get, you've got a really good camp supervisor on that trip. Yeah. So. And Discovery and Channel still be, gets to like oh yeah dibs. What's going on with Discovery? What are you doing there? Over um, there? I'm not going to go uh, on any uh, talk shows that <laughs> um, get you blacklisted. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna do so. Yeah, this one's good, right? Yeah, this is yeah. a blacklisted. Yeah, we, no, I think you're good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah what's the, what's the future? Because you have so many irons in the fire. Are you still doing Relentless? Mm-hmm. So Relentless is your supplement and vitamin kind mm-hmm. of line. Yep. Super great time for pandemic when people started caring, caring yeah. about their health. Another great thing that came out of this pandemic, we're like, hey, I have to be a healthy person. The only right. people getting sick are super sick people. Interesting. Maybe I should exercise. Right. Um, kind of irritating when you turn on any Instagram and there's like 15 live feeds of people doing a, like an at-home workout for other people to follow. You're like, right. <laughs> you know, you can look at it from that ego perspective, but you can also look at it like they're 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 doing their they're doing their grind. You know, as long as you don't see those TikTok dances, those those ones really 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 dig yeah. in like a knife into my side for some <laughs> well, reason. Well, I would be more <laughs> like, more doing them. inclined to follow uh, and watch and do what a fat guy is doing for a workout than I would to be watching you. I mean, yeah, that's why. Oh, no, I'm breathing heavy just watching him, but this guy over here, I, I do, but I. I <laughs> I do really want to know b- before we get off track. I do want to know, like, what all is going on? Like, what are you doing? Um, like, you still relentless. Yep, relentless um, is hammering Ranger up. Still doing great. Uh, Sheepdog response is. Um, you know, I think you guys all have that soft spot for having been yeah. places where you can't. Like, there's been times where like I've watched somebody on night vision raping somebody else, and you just watch that. Mm-hmm. You can't do anything. Can't do anything. Cannot. No. Matter of fact, there's Green Berets that have gone and uh, done uh, things, and they went to jail. Exactly. Right? You know, it's like you ra- you raped a bunch of boys. Neat. I know what to do with you. And uh, then they went to jail. And uh, I mean that that like that has for a long time uh, hurt me. Um, like, I don't have any post traumatic stuff, but that stuff like has eroded my soul. And now I'm at, like in a position with Sheepdog Response where I can empower people. You know, like a green brace, a force multiplier. Like that's mm-hmm. our job is we go someplace and we make more of us so they can do the fighting. And that's like what I've tried to do with sheepdog response is like, I know you would love to be in that gay nightclub when somebody comes in to light it up, you know? And like, you'd want to be in that movie theater watching some crappy Batman movie when some dude throws a smoke bomb in there with his mask and you're like, yeah, this is going to be <laughs> awesome. You know? And you're like, you want to be at a Christmas party where somebody walks in and is like, I don't want you to celebrate Christmas. So I'm gonna start shooting people. Like, of course we want to be there, but what are the tra- chances of Matt best being there? It's like, Zero to none. But what if I can train, tra- train like tens of thousands of people and make them prepared for that moment where right. somebody walks in, it's like, cool, I know what to do here. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I think on, on a, lo- a low level, just it's like increasing the survivor- survivability or the trauma one individual sustains based off of training and understanding of a situation they might be placed in in their life. And I think yeah. that's, that's hyper important. And it, it's, it's actually why part of why I'm such a, big second amendment supporter not only because i write but like you know i carry a gun most everywhere i go and i'm 6'2 220 pounds i've fought a decent amount in my life i'm 
I, you know, I'm not, I'm not a pusher. I'm not a pushover, and I still carry a firearm. The first guy that somebody like the last. I'm not very like I'm not super rapeable, right? And and I don't mean that in a like in a very dark sense. I just mean like there are people out there that genetically or or whatever they don't have the physicality to be able to defend themselves with just their body and giving them tools and opportunity to learn those it's super empowering and it gives itself someone an essence of security and the the mental well-being just knowing that you have a a, a, a little bit of a fight in you to, to hopefully get out of whatever terrible situation that that is an amazing thing and i think that more people should look into sheepdog for that reason alone there's only Agreed. a handful of guys out there i mean really there's only a handful of guys out there that I think or even be that would even begin to be qualified to start training people and uh you know being a guy that trained a lot of people in my in my previous profession and i think that's a compliment to your business and who you are which is there's only a handful of guys i would even consider sending people in their direction right because a lot of their these guys on the internet we see them all the time we see them in gun forums they're just one, they don't know what they're talking about. It's criminal. They have, yeah, it is criminal. Should be. They have zero yeah. experience-based knowledge. It's so this is how you uh, clear them out function. You're like, and, and, ah, yeah. Yeah. what and, did I just and, watch? And, and, and they're, they're, they're really graying the lines with uh, experience. So like... I, I've they seen I've seen experience. in a yeah as but a I, I've, swa- guy, I've seen you're like yeah yeah it's like now yours. now some are, are as toting a, as themselves a soft guy they're saying no, you oh didn't. I'm you, training. you failed the psych ops yeah. course I'm training soft guys no one dude that happened to be a green beret attended one of your courses it's not you training green no. berets like. No, it's well, but that, that, I mean, that's a good part. I think it goes with anything in life. Just do a little more research on what you're attending because I think people in good faith have the ability to get some really bad training and really bad advice across the board, whether that's nutrition, whether that's firearms training. It's just do a little research. It's just like nonprofits. It's a perfect example yeah. where people give their money away in good faith, good conscience because they want to make a difference. It's coming from an empathetic perspective. But People are embezzling the money and their pieces of shit. And so yeah. it's like, just do a little re- research on anything like that, especially when it's going to be a life-saving skill. Yeah. And it's terrifying, some some of the stuff I've seen. And we also have a discount code for Coffee Club members. <laughs> for Coffee Club members, too, uh, go to one of Tim's courses, sign up for one, or purchase something from Sheepdog. So uh, that's a shameless plug for Coffee Club members. You do get a discount code for Sheepdog Response. You can log into your coffee club. You can check that, and then you can go over and you can get a discount for one of his courses or something that he might be. If you on. carry a gun so for a living and you're worried about like the money of coming to our course, stop it. Like, right. just shoot me an email. You, we will figure it out. You're like, I don't, I don't care. Like, in any capacity, we, you can come train. Well, I'm gonna tee up on this, Tim, because we, we talked a lot of shit and made some jokes this podcast. But I think a reason that I really enjoy you is you've dedicated your whole life to like service and protecting communities and country and and i know we made some crazy jokes and all that but like i think do you feel that there's a massive importance now especially after this kind of whole corona thing that people become more responsible for their own safety and just take that tactical pause in their own personal life and go okay how do i sustain my life and secure my family because i think this has been an an awakening for a lot of people yeah I, i hope so I hope, you know, like all 350 million Americans, um, you know, census here, they're, they're here or not here, uh, that you decide and take individual responsibility seriously. Um, and, and that goes f- for every imaginable sense of the word, individual responsibility, dangerous freedom, believe in it. That means you got to be prepared. You have to be able to provide, you have to be able to protect like some very basic fundamental things of how that gorgeous constitution was crafted was so that you could do these things. So mm-hmm. now start living it. Now start embodying I mean, it. We could be in for some hard years ahead. We I mean, are in yes. for some hard years ahead. You, you've got, you've got a lot. The climate is, is, is iffy right now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good take. I think when I first started, the reason I kind of really got into fighting early on in jiu-jitsu is early on in high school, I got my ass bullied a decent amount because I was a skinny little frail kid. So I, I joined jiu-jitsu and then I realized, oh, now when I started wrestling people when I was like a senior, I would choke their ass out in like three seconds. And I'm like, oh, this is dope. I can protect myself. Then I'm like, wait, now if I see some boyfriend tagging his girlfriend on the street, I feel pretty comfortable engaging in that, knowing that I'm most likely going to win. And it, it gave me such a sense of confidence going into the military because I went, I can actually improve my own life and someone else's life a in a really shitty 
situation, yeah. but I'm willing to step up the plate because I have that confidence. Yeah. I'm not going to win every time, but at least I can. The more you train, the more you're going to win. Yeah. You know, like that's super straightforward. Um, and I, 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 training is a superpower. When everything starts going wrong around you, things are blown, blown up, people are screaming, people are getting sick, and you're sitting there being like, this ain't that bad. I know what to do. Yeah. Like, that's a cool place to be. And you can be, anybody can be there. Like, you don't have to be Ranger Battalion, motherfucking Matt Best, you know, like, Superstar Air Force can eat anything, you know, <laughs> Special Forces. Special Forces. Like, you don't have to do any special of that force. stuff. You literally just have to choose to start training, and it's it's crazy empowering. Um, confidence, capability, it's, yeah. This stuff is like, yeah, and that's the thing that I've continued to talk to people about is it's free. The information yeah. is free yeah you just have to listen to the right people and that's one of the things that i really like about this and do the work yeah do you you're exactly right you have to listen to people that know what they're talking about they have to have experience-based knowledge because that equates to wisdom you know when i look at like who are we looking at who are we talking to who are we talking to about uh independence and autonomy and being able to build confidence and train you have to go to people that have more than just an education in in the subject if you're listening to a Harvard professor that's never been war about how to master your confidence and try to become a more violent as far as a, a bi- violence capable person in a time where there's a need for it, you're probably not going to the right place. And, a politician telling you how you yeah. should run your business that's never owned a business? Go, that, 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 that's a perfect example. You shouldn't Stay be listening to people yeah. in the, in the, from that perspective. Not only will I not listen to you, I'm going to make sure that um, nobody votes for you because you're negatively impacting my life. There's, there's a huge amount of negativity out there. There's a huge amount of information that's directly at your fingertips, like right now, right, 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 right on the internet, right on YouTube. Just start fucking researching people. And the other thing is, is I hope part of this, it does increase people's awareness so they become more, more, real, more self-reliant. For instance, I got a DM this morning from a guy that was like, man, I listened to your podcast with Trevor, our, our buddy Trevor Thompson. And we're talking about uh, garden beds and growing vegetables. I'm like, use the pandemic just to, instead of dwelling on negativity and fucking sitting in your home yeah. and, you know, you know, DMing people and being a fucking cranky asshole, like go out and swing a fucking hammer and put some garden beds together, get some fucking dirt and start growing your own vegetables. Use this as an opportunity to learn and grow and stop being such an asshole. Yeah. Like, just use it as, a, as an opportunity to be a better neighbor, maybe a better husband and father. Fuck it. Rise to the occasion. Become a fucking leader. Maybe a better person. Listen to people like Tim. Stop being an asshole. That, that's what, like, my biggest piece of information is, like, turn the fucking internet yeah. off you got an for opportunity the negativity. To, you like, you have the, maybe the most unique opportunity to do work. Yeah. And I was like, I'm, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish my book in this quarantine time. Yeah. And I was like, wait a second. I'm just going to work my ass off. And that's what's happened. You know, Have you? Just, yeah. 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 I see it. I see it because it's like on your property. If it increases yeah. around. Oh, not even that. I mean, that, that's just what I like. Don't believe anything right. that's on that. Those Instagrams. Yeah. You know, cause th- those are all cr- crafted and <laughs> well, everybody's that way. I'm like, yeah. I try to keep my Instagram so fun. Cause I'm like, yeah. do I post? all the boring shit I have to do every day. Yeah. But I mean, it gets to they me just, the place where I want to go. They just see like this go. moment of like, oh, a complete chicken coop. And I was like, no, man, I had to stand in line at Home Depot for four hours so I could buy the freaking fencing because there's a line and they're only letting five people in an hour. Yeah. No, I love that. Every day you wake up is an opportunity to improve yourself, not even during this. And and I, I, I hope more people understand that. And your joke about the Instagram people working at home, I've said it for fucking years. I was like, I will whoop your ass with a retention band and a kettlebell. It's all you need. Yeah. And I hope more people realize, man, the ability to become physically fit doesn't require a gym membership and a 30-minute drive to the gym. It requires work. And you can do that body weight, one kettlebell, and I guarantee you can have for a fitness. six pack. Yeah, for fitness. Nope. There are experts. Like I cannot wait to get back with my professors. You're like right. I, I can't, like jujitsu is like a. Like, oh, well, of course, and I you're operating on like a hyper hyper professional level. I'm saying like a baseline of the, even high level <laughs> fitness. Yeah, 100 percent agree. Yeah, I, retention band kettlebell. I flipped a kettlebell around today that I bought in Tel Aviv in 2006. Like it was when it was like my first Kettle, two kettlebells. Kettlebells I weren't even out yet. 
<laughs> no, they were. I, I bought it in Tel like Aviv in 2006. <laughs> yeah. Like, and it, it's 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 been traveling with me since 2006. Think Speaking about the of, fucking ROI on that one kettlebell yeah. that I've had for fucking 14 years. Fucking flipping it around all around the fucking world. Same fucking kettlebell. You know what the funny part about that? Because we were talking about the home gym on the other episode. I have all this equipment, but there's probably four pieces of equipment that I use on a yeah. daily basis and i'm like oh yeah i have that like really expensive machine over there i guess i'll figure out something to do but i'm like a couple dumbbells center mass balls and kettlebells right. yeah. literally are most all my workouts yeah. uh my 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 contico is kind of still somewhere coming back from africa right and uh, as all of, like my kind of uh rule sandbags that I, those are all i also love they're just kettlebells that you just put sand in yeah and um and I like them because, and, and like the really big ones that you could just, you know, like do full body bags, yeah. you know, like aviator kit bag type things. And, um, those are just stuck somewhere in like Morocco. Probably. I just, I just want that Connex back. If you are an air <laughs> force person, please send me my box back. I, I know want a few. all of my stuff. Yeah. Uh, this crazy thing happened actually uh, yesterday, not to get too sidebar, but this Connex of sandbag stuff, like workout stuff showed up in my house and oh, I've been so working out it. with yeah, it every it. single day. Yeah, we both it. went through it. We threw a and bunch of stupid shit away that looked dumb. But. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of duct tape. Yeah. The convine at, you know, <laughs> freedom like on, hate. um, you know, <laughs> lo- is going to love this workout. Equipment. Uh, <laughs> all right. So what, what do you want to plug? Do you want to plug anything? Man, I need, I need more time. I want to, Finish this book. Yeah. Uh, Do you have a name for it yet? Can you it's say like, it? uh, you'll die if you're dumb. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> every, every name that like I, I, I flick at the publisher, they're like, ooh. I was like, that, that means it's good. And they're yeah. like, no, that uh, means like that'll make people go, ooh. And I was like, and yeah, that's good, right? And that's good. Right. <laughs> I bounced no. off Killing Bad Guys is fun for mine, and that was a hard no for my publisher. Actually, that name. Yeah, yeah, you can have and it. it's fun. Yeah, yeah. It's like it has to be self deprecating The whole book is just like, um, you know, it's dumb. And it's just like, oh, yeah, here's another instance where Tim's naked. Um, he's swimming in Morrow Bay. Is he trying to kill himself? I'm not sure. But there's three women that are pregnant, and he might have AIDS. True moment of my life. And... Um, <laughs> <laughs> that escalated quickly. Can that be the title of this episode? <laughs> three women, three pregnant, pregnant women, and I might have AIDS. And I might what have the? AIDS. Tim Kennedy. <laughs> that is a serious moment of my life. Uh, wow. Know? Um, a Coast Guard boat rolls up, and I remember the captain, his legs are hanging off the side, and he's like, hey, man, what's going on? I was like, man, I'm having a pretty rough day. And, uh, and the water's cold. The fog came in, and I didn't know where the coast was, so I didn't know which way to swim back to shore because I'd taken all my clothes off and just swam out because I had a bad day pretty bad day if you put it into the context of what was happening in my life and um and i just started swimming there was no intent of suicide right. at all but i just swam and i could swim water polo father and see the you know swimmer like not a problem and then like i turned back and and my landmarks morrow rock for example can't be seen because the fog and i couldn't even hear the coast so i was far enough out in the the fog as it rolled in was like dampening the sound so it sounded like the oh wow the, the waves were like all around me and then up cruises this Coast Guard boat, and this dude's like, hey, man. And, and I was like, yeah. So, you know, the water's cold. He's like, yeah, I see that. I was like, you're, a, you're an asshole. <laughs> and he's like, well, do you want up? And I was like, I don't know. He's like, well, tell me about it. So I tell him about it. And he's like, I'll just leave you. He's like, that's probably the best, best thing for you. And that was, I'm uh, 20. A year later, 9-11 happens, and I enlist, you know, but that was not even the worst, darkest day of my life. They at least told you which way the coast was, though, right? No, he continued to make fun of my penis in uh, m- the Morrow uh, Bay Ocean mm-hmm. there, the Pacific, which is like it's cold. 53 degrees. It's mm-hmm. cold. Yeah. Hmm. How yeah. far off did you go? I was a couple miles out. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, that's, that's solid. But when you can turn around and see the shore, it's not a problem. Right. But when you can't turn around or you can turn around, you're like, I don't know which way around is. Right. And um, so wh- whatever that old lady was that was with the binoculars and spotted me, thank you. Wow. She's probably dead now. Well, there we go. <laughs> well, Tim, it is always a blast to have you on, man. Love Keep up the good work. I love your energy. I love what you're trying to do with everything. Um, keep after it, brother. Thank you. Thank you for making the drive yeah, and doing this. My pleasure. Really appreciate it. Thanks for the coffee. Tim Kennedy, everybody. <laughs>